Los Angeles-based investment bank B. Riley & Company has purchased stock research from Karis & Company. And this focus is all on technology. Our editor-at-large, Corey Johnson, has more on this deal. Corey, why would B. Riley make this investment now? Yeah, John, this is a zig when everyone else is zagging. I mean, just as the other brokerages are tightening their belts and laying off both bankers and traders, I mean, think of the case of Think Equity or WJB Capital completely shutting down operations. And yet, right now, B. Riley's stepping up. Bryant Riley joins me from Los Angeles to discuss. Uh, Bryant, uh, what are you doing? Well, let's see. We are taking advantage of a lot of chaos out there. Um, obviously, there are, have been a lot of shutdowns, and uh, this is a great opportunity to build a brokerage firm. So we are aggressively going after it. Now, what do you see going on in the brokerage industry? Because obviously, there's a lot of pullback for a lot of the same reasons, not least of which the business of, of uh, underwriting technology companies and then later trading those stocks isn't what it used to be. Well, I think there's a great opportunity in some of the companies that are a little less high profile. I don't know that the world needs another Apple analyst, but um, in terms of some of the companies that we cover, companies you know uh, under a billion dollars, there's great opportunities and there's very little research. And in technology especially, we think there's, there's going to be a great environment for M&A. We think uh, big companies are going to buy small companies. And uh, Keras broadens our breadth and, and really increases our vertical penetration in technology. Yeah, Keras is always focused on, or traditionally focused on, among other things, larger sized companies. You guys have focused on sort of smaller opportunities. People might have not had their eye on the ball. How does that mesh? Well, the beauty of this transaction is our account overlap is 15%. So the infrastructure's there. Keras's relationship we thought very highly of. We're, uh, we, we really like the research. We, you know, our research, I, I think, is highly regarded. I think the combination of those two is going to be a pretty powerful uh, tool to the institutional community. Talk to me when you look at the tech banking uh, world. How does this, this new company, in, in some ways, uh, fit into the way that tech banking used to be? Well, I think what you're going to see, um, what I hope you see, is a little bit less fad-oriented banking. I think the world um, needs to focus a little bit more on free cash flow and, and businesses that actually generate revenues and profits and a little bit less on you know, whatever the fad of the year is, whether it's social media or whether it's you know, not necessarily technology but reverse Chinese mergers or, or whatever. And I think we, we need to go back to you know, what it used to be, which is good companies that are growing that need capital to continue the growth. And you know, I, think that, I think that's been missing from the investment banking community. There used to be a, a community of investment banks here at San Francisco that really focused on the tech community. It was Montgomery Securities, it was Hamburg and Quist, it was Alex Brown, it was, you know, Volpe. There were those, those guys were here focusing on these companies. Uh, you're, number one, you're down in L.A., but is that sort of your intention to kind of uh, be a bank of a certain size that can focus on companies of a certain size that get ignored by the Morgan Stanley's and Goldman Sachs of the world? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's a sweet spot. And, and we are Los Angeles, but realize that we'll have a meaningful presence in San Francisco. Karis had a San Francisco presence. We have a San Francisco presence. Um, so absolutely, there is a gap. And as you know, the research community has contracted, there is a gap of coverage in, in technology. And we, that's where we're going. And we think there's going to be, you know, we think multiples are low in, in, in a lot of the smaller technology companies, and they're high in the bigger ones. And that's going to create a really interesting M&A environment. I think there's a lot of money to be made in the, in the sub-billion technology companies. Now, I had some of these same kind of conversations with guys who were starting firms in, let's call it 2002 and so on. I remember talking to, you know, Mike Moe when he was starting Think Equity. He left, left Think Equity a long time ago, a long time before they shut the doors this year or shut the doors of most of their business. But I wonder, what did those businesses not get right? How does your model differ? Well, Corey, you and I were going and seeing companies at the AA conference 15 years ago, and I think we cover some of those same companies. You know, we don't. Uh, we really are sometimes boring, and we follow companies that might not be in the media. I don't, as I said, we don't cover Apple, um, but we stick to our core. And ultimately, I think if you're finding companies that are, you know, either out of favor and um, cheap, and and not yeah. chasing each fad, that's where the opportunities are. Right. We've never done that. We've really stuck to that that core. Brian, we got to jump. Thanks so much, John. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Corey.